What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, welcome back to another video lesson. My patrons in the Shred Guitar community over at patreon.com slash Bernd have decided that we should talk more about string skipping this month. String skipping is a very important but also quite hard aspect of coming up with creative shred licks. In this lesson I want to show you a super powerful workout concerning that that I also include in my daily practice sessions right now. So without further ado, let's get started right away. When we talk about shred guitar playing, we often have fast three note per string licks in mind that are closely connected concerning the spacing. I personally really love the sound of this fast and fluid playing style. But one major frustration I keep hearing from my students is that they feel like they are playing the same licks over and over again. So today I want to show you one more very powerful and important building block you can use for your licks in the form of string skipping approaches. But before we check out more creative applications, let's focus on the workout I prepared for this lesson. You can download the tabs, guitar profiles and free practice backing tracks on my Patreon page patreon.com slash Bernd by joining the Shred Guitar community today. For this lick I was descending in the E natural minor or Aeolian scale. As we already discussed on here this one features the same notes as the popular A minor or C major scale, we just have to raise F to F sharp and we get E minor or G major. As always I also had to include a little theory twist with this lick, in the ending we change it to E Phrygian. Here we are lowering the second scale degree of E natural minor, F sharp is becoming F again. So now we end up with the exact same notes like in C major or A minor again, so we could see it as the third mode of C major or C Ionian or the fifth mode of A minor or A Aeolian. But I don't want to talk too much about theory in this lesson, let's move to the string skipping. The main focus with this technique is escaping the constant pairing of strings. So when we think about a basic foundation or fragment of a shred lick, we usually think about a string pair, two different strings, or we are just ascending and descending in different ways between the strings. But we very often forget that we could actually skip some strings to make the licks more interesting. So for a basic example I could just think of a lick that involves two different strings and I could just skip a string. So instead of playing on the E and A string, I could pick the E and D string, so... But of course it's also a bit harder and there's a special trick concerning the picking angle that I want to show you with the workout for this week. So for the workout I was moving this scale phrase through different positions. The very first challenge we are facing is switching correctly to that upstroke here on the high E string coming from the downstroke on the G string. We don't want a pull off here or any kind of unwanted noise so that might take some time but what's even more challenging of course is switching back from the upstroke here to the downstroke on the G string. So by doing that our right hand has to travel quite a distance and if you're not used to that please take some time, practice this to a metronome because timing is very very important here. Since it's a bigger movement than usual, since your hand has to travel more between the strings, timing can be a huge problem. You might end up speeding up that first phrase to get to the upstroke in time and then going back down a bit slower or you get stuck between the different strings, a lot of things can happen here. So definitely start slow and use a metronome, film yourself or at least place a mirror in your practice environment. My patrons also always send me video footage of their practice routines so I can give more detailed feedback. The trick I want to show you now before you get to practicing this lick on your own concerns the hand rotation and picking angle once more. So when you get to that upstroke on the high E string, you don't want to get stuck between the E and B string 
or you don't want to jump over all the strings right here to get to the downstroke. So this kind of picking angle will help you with that. So your pick can escape from the strings and you're in a good position for your downstroke. If you use an angle like that, I'm over exaggerating here, I'm stuck between the E and B string right here and I have to jump all over the strings for the downstroke right here. We already discussed that with three note per string licks, but here it's even more important since we're also skipping a string. So if you're playing with this kind of angle, you have to jump over the B string and over the G string too to be in the right position for the downstroke and that's not really the most economic choice here. So once again the comparison, angle number one and angle number two, when I rotate my hand like that, I'm naturally in a good position for the downstroke on the G string and I don't get stuck between the strings at all. So when you practice the lick, make sure to experiment between the different picking angles and see what works best for you. And then to make it more interesting harmonically, I move it through the scale. So first... Then I was just moving down the exact same pattern. One position in the scale. And then one more position. So when you have a good fretboard visualization and can visualize the E minor scale right here, you can just move down one pattern in different positions and it will get that cool classical kind of sound. Notice my picking position and angle when I'm playing it fast now. And then we move down to E Phrygian and we also add one more extra challenge. For this part of the lick we're switching between the G and B string and the B and E string. which is pretty challenging. So before you piece every single section together, make sure to practice them on their own. Please remember that you can also always move down the workouts to a section of the fretboard where you feel more comfortable at. So if you feel better working here from the fifth to the ninth fret, for example, in the beginning, just do that. I also recommend to move from one challenge to the next one. So if it's very hard for you now to get that upstroke correctly after the string skipping, just practice that to a metronome, keep it small and simple and focus on getting that correctly without any pull-offs from the left hand right here or any unwanted noise coming from lifting the finger. As always the listener shouldn't really hear that we are having a hard time right here skipping strings. And after that you can Make a cycling pattern out of it in triplets and then you can move to the one that I used and so on. That's it for the very first string skipping lesson on the channel, hope you enjoyed that one. Please let me know if we should continue exploring this topic in the monthly video lesson votings on Patreon. We can look into much more practical applications and creative examples. In the end make sure to subscribe to join this community today, leave a like if you enjoyed the lesson or if you learned something new, that always means a lot to me, or a comment in case you have any questions I could answer for you. I will hopefully see you in the next video lesson, all the best until then and have fun practicing.